Hello, and welcome to McNicholas High School, and let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Those who trust the Lord will find new strength. They will be strong like eagles, soaring upward on wings. They will walk and run without getting tired. That's good advice as we begin this match. Trust in the Lord and find your strength. Trust in the Lord and find your brilliance. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Again, welcome to Rocket Nation. McNicholas Athletics would like to thank Midwestern Plumbing, its proud partner and the presenting sponsor for the 2023 Queen City Hoops Fest Christmas Classic. Midwestern provides quality plumbing services to the Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky area through the use of time-tested and innovative techniques. With their years of hands-on expertise and latest technology, Midwestern provides lasting solutions that leave their customers satisfied. Visit Midwestern-Plumbing.com for more information or call Midwestern Plumbing at 513-753-0050. Welcome fans to the McNicholas Broadcasting Network here for the beginning of the third annual Queen City Hoop Fest Christmas Classic brought to you by Midwestern Plumbing. I'm Brady Labor. I'm joined by Matt Warman. Andy Edwards is along for the ride as we are ready for game number one, five today, 10 total over the course of the next two days. It's the McNicholas Rockets girls taking on the Bishop Brossert Lady Stangs. And this should be an interesting matchup. First of all, the, the clear uh, thing for you is the graphics coordinator, Matt. Both teams wearing green. Very hard to decide which shade of green for each one. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, quite prevalent in this uh, <laughs> in this tournament or this uh, this holiday yeah. classic. Bo a lot, quite a few teams that are uh, wearing the green this season. Absolutely. So Bishop Rosser comes to town with a 6-1 and one record. Their only loss was their last time out in what they call their crosstown shootout slash showdown against Campbell County High School. They come from Alexandria, Kentucky in the 37th district. They lost to the Lady Camels 48-44. Steve Brown's their head coach. Their top player is Rachel Shoemaker. She leads them in points and rebounds. 14 and a half per game points. Almost five rebounds for contest top field goal shooter as well and for McNicholas they come in at two and five oh and three already in the early GC ed co-ed matchups but they have a change their starting lineup as Ava Strange sitting out with a concussion today and it'll be Addison Renicky who will start in her place yeah tough loss for the Rockets you know uh, Strange obviously you know a big contributor on this team and they, they're gonna have to come up with production on that especially coming in you're two and five it's gonna be a struggle to uh continue to get some confidence going with this team. So the Rockets will start Ranke along with their leading scorer, Mia Nee Neighbor, Lily Must, Grace McCafferty, and Jordan Wheatley. The jump ball has been taken care of, and Bishop Rosser wearing the road hunter green going up against the white-clad McNicholas Rockets. And a shot early on by freshman Grayley Kramer misses, but a rebound by the Lady Stangs, they'll have Lucy Gadouli, Zoe Woosley, Zoe Myers, Rachel Shoemaker, and Grayley Kramer as the starters for Steve Brown's group. Steve Brown in his third year with the Lady Stangs after coming over from district rival the Scott Lady Eagles three seasons ago and a nice duck in and they get it to Rachel Shoemaker down low and that's gonna be the point of emphasis for the Lady Stangs. Yeah, just a nice feed down low from Zoe Myers. Getting her under the basket and wide open for the shot. So the seal has been broken in this one. Here is McNick possessing the ball offensively for the first time. 
Jordan Wheatley with it. Now over here on the left side, it's Renicky. McCafferty, looks like the Rockets being very deliberate here on offense here, the first go through. Here's a blow by and a finger roll missed by Knee Neighbor, and it's rebounded by the Lady Stangs. Bishop Rosser pushing it in transition. Good job there by the Rockets to get themselves back in transition early. Here's Gadouli. Now they'll swing it left side. It's Myers on the drive. Nice cutoff there. Here's Shoemaker. Back out to Myers for three. No good. And Shoemaker had it momentarily, but the Rockets come away with it. Knee neighbor having a hard time handling it. And finally, a foul is called by lead official Bobby Sagers. And it'll be against Bishop Rossard's Greeley Kramer. The first foul here called in the game. And they'll set it up underneath the basket for McNick. Triggering it is Wheatley. She finds McCafferty. And now it's Ranicky. And it's picked her pocket. That's Myers on the steal. All the way, lays it up, can't finish. Boy, that's a tough one there if you're a Lady Stangs fan. Yeah, nice little, you know, just a decent defense there for the Rockets, but uh, Knee Neighbors taking the three. Cafferty missed the layup on the other end, got blocked by the rim, and both teams really struggling here on the offensive end in the early going. Nice crossover by Meyer, just throws it up off the banking board and in. Bishop Brossert now has a 4-0 lead, and that sets up their 2-2-1 press. But the Rockets get through it quickly. Here's Wheatley with it now. Now the Rockets will set up in the half court. The Rockets seem a little out of sync with each other right now. There's a long three-pointer, no good. Shoemaker gets the rebound. She'll start the break herself. Kramer, the freshman, and it's good. And she'll go to the free throw line. A closeout foul committed by Knee Neighbor. And just like that, an old-fashioned three-point play opportunity for the Lady Stangs. Cannot convert, but it's still an early 6-0 lead here for Bishop Rosser. Wheatley going to run the offense. She pitches it off to Knee Neighbor. Here's a long three out of the corner. Got it. Nothing but the nylon there. Addison Renicky with a three-point goal, and that finally breaks the seal for the Rockets. That's what you need if you're the Rockets is just to get started on the scoring and then let your defense work things out, and they find that under the basket there. Oh, nice transition pass. Can't finish, though, as knee neighbor couldn't get it above the rim, and here come the Lady Stangs. The Hunter Green versus the Kelly Green. Is that what we should call it? <laughs> I suppose so. I remember when I was growing up, and I'm an Alexandria native, it was the green and gold of Bishop, Bishop Rosser, but they changed to the green and white at some point during my adulthood, and I missed that memo. Long three-pointer all alone, no good, and a rebound there by Shoemaker. So, of course, McNick not... They only average four and a half made three pointers per game, shooting 21 and a half percent. And right now they're living up to those numbers because they're having a hard time making the basket, making the ball go in the basket. Yeah, McCaffrey got a little lucky there, making sure she didn't get her hand on that ball before it went out of bounds. And Rockets are going to gain possession. Maddie Dorhagen checks in for McNick. She wears number 23, also a couple of changes made by Bishop Rossard as well. And then on the other end, it's a long two-pointer for Lily Must. Driving down there is, oh, nice baseline pass to Woosley. Here's Hadley Eviston wearing number three. She checked in during that previous break. The kick out and a long three. Boy, that could have brought down rain. It was so high, but missed by the eighth grade guard, Kylie Smith, and then the run out. Thought there was gonna be a foul called there against Eviston, and it's a play on for Bishop Rosser. There's Shoemaker kicking it out. 
Now it's Eviston driving, and it's rejected there. Molly Dornhagen, the 5'10 freshman, distorts the shot there, and more substitutions come in with 3.06 left in the quarter. The ball just came off of the feet or shins of uh, Dornhagen, so it's going to stay with the Stangs. Here's Brosser with it, far side from where you see the camera angle. This is Myers and loses it. Not a great pass. Allie Strange checked into the game and came away with that loose ball for McNick. And now on the other end, here's Shoemaker. It's like a cone drill, but can't finish. Eviston gets it, and she'll give it up, and it's put in by Ellie Crift. A 5'11 junior forward, <laughs> Ellie Clift. You're right. I had that written down wrong because Crift is another Camel County name. <laughs> Crift's auto body. I had her mistaken. That's totally my fault. You'd think i know those kind of intricacies. We even corrected ourselves before the game, 100%. too. hundred <laughs> percent. I was the one who brought it up. On the other end, a nice finger roll from the left hand by Zoe Myers. It's a 10-5 Bishop Rossert lead. As we approach the two-minute mark of the quarter, nice move off the glass and in. Jordan Wheatley getting her first bucket. She averages nearly 13 points per game, second leading scorer on this team for the Rockets. There's Myers with it now. Guarded by Knee Neighbor. She'll kick it out to the far side into the corner. Here's Shoemaker. Through contact, nice wall up there. No good on the shot, and it touches the top of the backboard. But Jordan Wheatley with good defense there for McNick on Shoemaker. Yeah, and the, the bread and butter for the Rockets so far has been their defense. They've been able to, to put up a wall to, you know, obviously still down in this one. That's more of an offensive thing as Knee Neighbor's going to get the travel oh, on that, that one. There's that pressure that Bishop Rosser applies, and Knee Neighbor got caught up in it. Glad you joined us here on the McNicholas Broadcasting Network for basketball action. The first of five games today in the Queen City Hoop Fest. Christmas Classic presented by Midwestern Plumbing. Here's Shoemaker with it. Shoemaker for Bishop Rosser, kicks it out. Wide open, top of the key, no good. The miss by Clift, and then a loose ball foul called. And it's going to be against Shoemaker. So Wheatley and Shoemaker really battling things out here. And that time Shoemaker with the discard is called for the foul. And Gadouli going to check back in for the Lady Stangs. As the Rockets inbound the ball back to knee neighbor. Again, a full court press. Addison Renicky also checked in for the Rockets. How about that? The lefty jump shot. It's a long two-pointer for Allie Strange, a freshman guard, the younger sister of Ava Strange, who, as we said, if you missed it at the beginning of the broadcast, Ava not available today in concussion protocol. And then thrown that one away. is thrown away right into the hands of Renicky, who gets the start for the injured Ava Strange. Down low, here's Dornhagen. Nice move, and she'll draw the foul. Looks like Hadley Eviston will be the guilty party, and she is. That's her first. Team's third here of the quarter. So Dornhagen will go to the free throw line on the season. Four out of six, and she makes the free throw. And Ellis, Ellis Zek checking in. She looked like she was checking in for the shooter the way she <laughs> did the reversal there. But splitting the pair as the Rockets cannot take the lead. They'll have to settle for the tie for now. Here's a long three-pointer by Gaduli is short. And it is still not grabbed, and it will stay downtown with the Lady Stangs. It looked like it was tipped by a McNick player, but to no one. Thrown right into Zach, and oh. Zach's going to take it down, down court with Watch a wide out, open lady. layup. How about that? She's going to get it. off the wrong foot with the wrong hand and still <laughs> laid it up and in. Great job there by Zach defensively. And that's the hardest layup I, for me to ever make was when you're all alone, everybody in the gym knows you're all by yourself there. There's a long three-pointer out of the corner, no good by Smith, and it's chased down by Gadouli. 
And at the buzzer, no good. But after the first eight minutes of play, how about that? After falling behind, the McNicholas Rockets jump back out in front for the first time. They lead it 12 to 10 here on the McNicholas Broadcasting Network. The official insurance partner of the Queen City Hoops Fest is the Seamers Insurance Agency. Located on the east side of Cincinnati, Seamers has been family owned and operated since 1954 and now run by 1974 and 1999 McNick graduates Barry and Zach Schmidt. If you're in the need for new insurance quotes, competitive pricing, and a business that provides caring personal service, call Seamers Insurance, a certified independent insurance agency at 513-469-8877 or visit SeamersInsurance.com. Welcome back. Second quarter about to begin at the third annual Queen City Hoop Fest Christmas Classic here at McNicholas High School. Bogan shoots Jim here in Mount Washington. The Rockets will have the ball first, but how about that? You know, Bishop Prosser jumps out to an early lead, but the Rockets chipped away and ended up taking the lead right at the end of the quarter. Yeah, the Rockets defense able to, to come up with some big plays, get that uh, steal there on the inbound pass and the runaway. Oh. Zoe Meyer just picked the pocket of knee neighbor, and then she throws it over the head of Woosley, and the Rockets get it back. And possession being a little bit of a struggle to start here the second quarter for both teams. Yeah, knee neighbor didn't do a good job of protecting the ball on the one-on-one -on -one dribble, and then here on the other end, it's Wheatley. Nice little job into the painted area and knocks it in. So largest lead of the day so far, even though we are early into this one for the Rockets. Here's Woosley. Woosley drives, throws it up, no good. And a great block out and rebound by Grace McCafferty. McCafferty, the team's leading rebounder at six per contest. And now a long three-pointer right side, no good. It's rebounded by Renneke and it more or less gets taken away from her by Rachel Shoemaker. Kramer back in for Bishop Rosser wearing 44 in green. I know fans of both teams might be confused, right? The two <laughs> green teams. McNick's the home team, they wear the white. The Hunter green by Bishop Rosser. Here's a kick out Kramer. A little far out of her price range. So she gets it to Myers. Looking to Shoemaker, who's posted up at the free throw line. Oh, nice little two-person action there, and it's finished by Rachel Shoemaker. But a nice pass there by Zoe Woosley. To the Rockets with Knee Neighbor. Knee Neighbor still testing it for air, finds Lily Must to Renneke. Renneke averaging three points and three rebounds, getting the start today, and the ball is taken away there by Shoemaker, and it counts, and she'll go to the free throw line. Just great body control there, able to get the ball up and in, and she's going to go for the old-fashioned three-point play as well. She will. The foul was called on Renneke. That is her first, and I don't know if we've talked about this yet, but the new nationwide high school rules, the National Federation says – the fouls reset at the end of each quarter. So that's the first in the quarter committed by the Rockets, which I think is a great thing. Not that you asked my opinion. I just <laughs> gave it. Oh, nice little wraparound pass, but not handled properly. Whoa, that's way downtown. And playing a little string music is Mia Knee Neighbor. Knee Neighbor can really drain them when she's uh, oh. on fire. And she puts her team back in the lead with a Deep shot. Leads the team in all three shooting categories percentage-wise, from the floor, from the three-point line, and at the charity stripe. 30% shooter, that's not very good if you think about it, but it leads the team, and she certainly looked good on that one. And now a jump ball, no, they're gonna call a foul instead. It's gonna be a foul on Must. So Lily Must commits her first foul. Second of the quarter. And it's thrown away. 
And the Rockets come away with a turnover. The Rockets on the season have forced 10 steals through their defense, and that was pretty much an easy one there. And then how about Wheatley testing her long-range skills? Wheatley shooting less than 20% from the three-point line, buries one there. When Wheatley and Knee Neighbor hook up together and they, they're both on it, they can really get things done for the Rockets. Kramer misses the three-pointer and now hitting the ground, and it's a tie up there. And it will go to Bishop Rosser. And now a timeout is going to be called here. It'll be the 30-second variety. We should probably keep that right here. Yeah. As, of course, we got a lot of fine sponsors here. And uh, some of the voiceover work was done by yourself, and I did one, and Andy, Andy Edwards yeah. will be here for a couple of games here today. So uh, Getting the whole gang involved. Getting everybody involved, <laughs> right? But early going here, McNick really showed some, you know, stick to right? They didn't hang their head, falling behind early, and right now Bishop Brossard is struggling to score points right now. Yeah, as I said earlier, the Rockets really put themselves into some good positions just by playing some solid defense. They got locked down there quite a bit and they were able to to get some you know get the ball back into their hands when they uh when they were down and that was able to put them back into an even keel at the end of the first half or first quarter so kramer will inbound it underneath the basket she'll get it back from woosley now they'll get it to shoemaker with her left hand no good and it's rebounded by the rockets here's strange out the knee neighbor Neighbor showing the handle as Kramer comes out to guard her. It's knocked away by Gaduli, but Knee Neighbor regathers. This is Ava Strange over to Dornhagen. That's not a good pass there at the ankles, and it's Kramer getting on the ground to pick it back up. That's a tough, tough bounce pass to make when you're that close. Yeah, dribble handoff would work much better there as Kramer misses the long two-pointer, and it's rebounded by the Rockets. Dornhagen makes up for her air with the rebound pull up jumper from three no good by Allie Strange we won't have to worry about calling both their names today Allie the younger one the five six freshman with older sister out with an injury and there is a three-point shot knocked down by the five nine freshman Grayley Kramer Kramer shooting 30 percent from long range on the season there's a dribble handoff this is Muss, and she says it taken away from her by Woosley. Woosley with the left hand, no good. And Shoemaker somehow comes away from the pile with it, and that's not going to make head coach R.J. Strange very happy. He's going to call the timeout, and we'll take the break along with the teams. 3.20 left to go before halftime. The Rockets lead by one over Bishop Rosser. McNicholas Athletics would like to thank its proud partner, BSN Sports, and our McNicholas team rep, Kevin Snyder, for their continued support of the Queen City Hoops Fest and McNicholas Athletics. BSN Sports provides over 450 McNicholas athletes with top-of-the-line gear and service to outfit our 26 sports programs. If you're in the business for outfitting any youth organizations or amateur athletic teams, give BSN Sports a call or visit bsnsports.com. Andy Edwards behind the camera for this game here. A three-person crew here for ten games over the next two days. This is the first of five today in the third annual Queen City Hoop Fest Christmas Classic presented by Midwestern Plumbing. R.J. Strange had to burn a couple of timeouts there, not happy with his team's uh, work there the last couple trips. Yeah, obviously getting flustered by this uh, press defense from, <laughs> as we see a foul there on, looks like Kramer is going to get her. 
That's two on Kramer. But yeah, the, the Lady Stang's really starting to clamp down on the Rockets defensively, and they're uh, struggling with it just a little bit. Hadley Eviston checks in, and Kramer will go out with those two fouls. Interesting to see how long she'll stay on the bench if Coach Steve Brown leaves her there the remainder of the first half or not. His assistant coach Adam Franson talks to her. No good. That was a long two-pointer there shot by Allie Strange. And here come the Lady Stangs trying to take the lead. They trail by one here. Here's Eviston, dribbles into a double team, needs help. Well, that was saved by Ellie Clift. And a long three-pointer by Myers, no good. And it's rebounded by McCafferty. And here come the Rockets trying to run it. But Bishop Rosser does a great job of getting in back on defense, cutting off knee neighbor. Here's Wheatley into the painted area, a little too strong. And the long rebound gathered by Eviston. Eviston just a freshman for the Lady Stangs. Here's Shoemaker over across. Here's the three, no good, and it's knocked out of bounds by knee neighbor as Ellie Clift went for the three-point shot there. To no avail, it's gonna stay though with Bishop Rosser. Here's Myers with it guarded out in the front court. The trapping defense, they find the open Shoemaker and she can't convert, it's rebounded by Strange. Knee neighbor, thought about it, standing right there on the Coach Jerry Dorger logo that we saw get put in just two seasons ago. And how about that, the lefty with the nylon song there, Allie Strange, her second three-pointer already. And she's already eclipsed her season high with six points here in this first half. They call that foul against Allie he Strange. Said Allie, he said green, didn't he? They're both wearing green. You gotta tell me white, my friend. But Allie Strange with her first one. So for her, that is her first, team's third of the quarter. And now the Lady Stangs will trigger it in from Bishop Rossard in Alexandria, Kentucky. Shoemaker has to regather and a reach in foul on the double team. That's a tough one there. And that's going to be on. Is that, is that McCafferty? It is. So McCafferty commits the foul. That's her first. When we get to five, Bishop Rosser will shoot the bonus. As we're at four right now. Oh, nice step through move and a great finish there. That's Kylie Smith, a 5'9", eighth grader, if you need it. And then two Rockets player collide there, and they somehow get a shot off anyway. Nice contest on the shot there. Dornhagen couldn't quite muscle through it and just shot it over. A little miscommunication there on the Rockets' offensive set where two people came to the same spot, and both of them hit the deck. And now... Another timeout called by R.J. Strange, and that's the third one he's taken in the half. This will be the 32nd variety, so with just under a minute left before halftime, we'll keep it right here. We don't have any obligation to do <laughs> under two minutes and <laughs> all the all the things that normal TV has to do, That's right. right. We can kind of call our own <laughs> shots here, right? There's no media timeouts, which is not bad. I mean, it just it's more structured. We get to, to kind of just babble through this if we have yeah, to. Yeah, you know, filibuster we're, our way through it. We are, uh, and we're figuring average. it out. Well, we got to figure it out here, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's going to take that, us a, and we're a little glad bit. The fans are entertained or befuddled all at the same time on the McNicholas Broadcasting Network, and they could probably go and find this um, on demand later on, right? Yes, They're absolutely. Hearing, yeah, um, for anybody that needs to, to phone a friend, where can they find these games at? Obviously, if you're watching it here right now, you see it. this, you already found it. Uh, you can come back to this game at any point and yeah. watch it whenever you want. This will be available to you guys at any point on YouTube. Just search the McNicholas Broadcasting Network. You can find some of our other great work here that we've done in the past. We do Nick football as well. And an offensive rebound and a second opportunity leads to a personal foul. Going to the free throw line, Jordan Wheatley. And I missed who they called that foul on. I think he said that was three. He did. If he did, that's Hadley Eviston, and that's her second, and that's the second Bishop Rosser player to commit two fouls here, and she'll go out, and we'll see our first look at Ava Walters, a 5'11 sophomore, coming in 
to the game. Also, a McNick ring, uh, substitute as Ella Zek checks in. Second time we've seen her. No good. Misses that one, does Wheatley. And she missed both opportunities there, and that's going to be a struggle. Leaving, we struggled with that last season as well. Leaving some food on the table there as McNick gets the steal. Here's Zach. Nice move. The step through, no good. Got to finish that. And now again, Bishop Rossard has an opportunity to either tie or take the lead here. They don't look like they want to go for the last shot. As that one's deflected by Wheatley, and with 14.4 left to go, I'd imagine this will be for the final shot of the, of the half. Yeah, kick it around the perimeter a little bit until you can find a cut on the inside and get that easy layup well, if you can. They went to their bread and butter, Rachel Shoemaker, and now a pass down low, and it's stolen away by Strange. Strange. And it's Shoemaker with the steal. Three seconds, and Bishop Rossert will not get a shot off, and that's how the first half ends. As after trailing early in the first quarter, the McNicholas Rockets take the lead, and they hang on to it. Going into the intermission, they lead Bishop Rossert by a score of 23-21. to Here in the first game of five in the third annual Queen City Hoops Fest Christmas Classic presented by Midwestern Plumbing here at McNicholas High School on the McNicholas Broadcasting Network. Fans, real quick, let's run down the scoring if we can. For Bishop Rosser, they were led in scoring by Rachel Shoemaker's eight points. Greeley Kramer had five, four for Zoe Myers, two each for Ellie Cliff and Kylie Smith. For the Rockets, it looks like it was what real quick math here. Jordan Wheatley was seven leading away, six for Allie Strange, three each for Addison Renicky, me and me neighbor, two points for Ella Zek, two points for Lily Must, and I believe oh, and one point for Molly Dornhagen. Real quick, final thoughts here in that first half, um, Matt Warman. Yeah, some sloppy play on both <laughs> on both teams today, just uh, struggling. I think both with those press defenses uh, coming and going. Obviously, when uh, the Rockets started out facing that press defense early, it was uh, it was tough going for them, but they were able to fight through it and really kind of use their defense to their advantage and, and get themselves back in the game. On the other side of the ball, Brosser just struggling here towards the end, just making sure that they're they're making solid passes, and and they've had a couple where they've just thrown them away when they needed it most, and now they're uh, down by two, but this is still a definitely a manageable game for uh, both teams. Before we go ahead and toss it to our sponsors, we just want to let you know the schedule of events today here. The next game, the second, is a girls' game as well. It'll be Ursuline Academy taking on Mount uh, Notre Dame Academy from Northern Kentucky. Then the boys roll in here, scheduled at 5 p.m. It'll be St. Charles Prep out of Columbus, Ohio, taking on Newport Central Catholic. Then the next game, the McNicholas Rockets, the host team, take on the Older Panthers. And then in the nightcap, should be a good one, Covington Catholic takes on the defending OHSA Division I state champions, the Knights from Archbishop Oban in Akron, Ohio. That is our lineup for today, and we're glad you're here for all of it or part of it or some of it. You can always come out to Mount Washington if you want to see it in person, and you can watch it on demand at a later time. Fans, we'll toss it to our break, and we want to remind you to please Check a look at our sponsors here in this one. Of course, our presenting sponsor is Midwestern Plumbing, and we don't want to forget about Seamers Insurance, BSN Sports, La Rosa's, and Buffalo Wild Wings here in Mount Washington. Fans, we'll be back for second half action on the McNicholas Broadcasting Network. McNicholas Athletics would like to thank Midwestern Plumbing, its proud partner and the presenting sponsor for the 2023 Queen City Hoops Fest Christmas Classic. Midwestern provides quality plumbing services to the Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky area through the use of time-tested and innovative techniques. With their years of hands-on expertise and latest technology, Midwestern provides lasting solutions that leave their customers satisfied. Visit Midwestern-Plumbing.com for more information or call Midwestern Plumbing at 513-753-0050. McNicholas Athletics has been a proud partner with La Rosa's Pizzeria for many years. 
McNick and the Hoops Fest would like to thank La Rosa's for Thursday's post-game team meals and their continual generous support of our student athletes and teams. If you're hungry and looking for somewhere to eat after the game, visit the Anderson, Amelia, Mount Washington, Marymount, or Eastgate locations and help those who support us.
Second half action ready to get underway in game one of our five games here today in the third annual Queen City Hoop Fest Christmas Classic presented by Midwestern Plumbing and McNicholas High School. And just as I suspected, nobody wanted to wait for the 39 seconds that remained. We're going to go right to second half action because we do have five games. We do got to have a schedule. And McNick will inbound the ball and start the third quarter that way. Something else that's going to keep us on schedule, Matt Worman, is the recite. Yeah, the reset of the fouls at the end of each quarter. Yeah, that one's going to take some getting used to. Yeah, uh, but it's the greatest invention ever. It, it, it's <laughs> it's to me, it's a tune to the pitch clock in Major League Baseball. Okay. You go. Why haven't we done this for a hundred years? Yeah. We fought it until now, and then you have it applied, and you go, "Wow, this is awesome!" Just like that was awesome right there. The little floater put in by Jordan Wheatley, who leads all scores right now with nine points. Yeah, Wheatley just able to push through the contest on that one, get it up enough, and then and now a whistle away from the ball. It's gonna be a foul on Must. It's a guilty party there. Bobby Saggers, our lead official here. So Lust with her second foul, first of the quarter, as we just reiterated. And Shoemaker goes straight to the basket. Nobody stops her, and she's the first person to get the double figures here with 10 points on the day. And you're going to see for the Rockets, knee neighbor. She's going to. She's actually playing a little bit more conservative than we've seen from her in the past. She likes to push it down into uh, coverage, regardless of who's in the paint and Bishop Brossert looks like they're in some sort of matchup zone here as that's deflected out of bounds by Zoe Woosley and it'll be inbounded side out by the Rockets 25-23 oh nice finger roll action and the bucket is good for me and E-Neighbor so knee neighbor held it as two baskets in the game so far she's the Rockets leading score at nearly 16 per game but just five right now. Here's Shoemaker, her opposite number for Bishop Rosser. Here is Shoemaker, down low, through traffic, has it knocked away, regathers, kicks it out to Kramer, top of the key, who nails it. Second three-point shot made by Greeley Kramer, the 5'9 freshman, and then on the other end, a quick trigger there by Addison Renneke, no good, and here come the Lady Stangs, trailing by one, and then a little nickel dimer called there, and that's against, that is knee neighbor, so that's two on knee neighbor. Two in the quarter, so Bishop Rosser will inbound it. There's Woosley, out to Zoe Myers, who got off to a hot start for Bishop Rosser offensively. Now it's Kramer. And Kramer loses control, out of bounds. Good job there defensively by Grace McCafferty. But that was there pretty much an unforced error. Yeah, it took the words right out of my mouth. I, there wasn't really a whole lot of uh, pressure there necessarily. It was just good defense, and the ball just bounced away from her. Here's Knee Neighbor with it for McNick, wearing the white home uniforms. Wheatley dances the baseline, gets it out to Must, misses by a lot, and it's rebounded by Shoemaker who dribbles out of bounds, and that's Knee Neighbor putting the pressure on her. Yeah, the rebound just seemed to bounce out of Grace McCafferty's hands and right into uh, the hands of the Lady Stangs. Here's the trigger. They get it into Knee Neighbor. The much taller Shoemaker guards her. How about that? Dancing with it and puts it up with the left handed in. The Brossard bench wanting the walk call on that one, but no good. Does that get a three? Wow, that's Kramer again. So Kramer with back-to-back -back threes with the answer, tying up the game at 29. And here comes Bishop Brossard off the missed shot. In transition, Woosley. A lot of contact, no call, and it's Wheatley with a rebound. The referee's just letting the ladies play. Three-pointer by Knee Neighbor, no good, and it's rebounded by Dornhagen, who might have picked up her pivot foot. Other people calling three seconds, but the second opportunity there by Addison Renneke. They were calling three seconds. I thought it was more of a travel. Either way, no whistle called. It's a play on, and McNick gets the bucket, and there is a traveling violation on this end. Make that Bishop Brosser got the bucket on the other end. 
As we go here and substitutions galore here. We're going to see Allie Strange check back in for the Rockets as well as Dornhagen. Also, Kylie Smith coming back yeah, in for Brosser. Kylie Smith, a good looking eighth grader, averaging nearly eight points a game, 2.6 rebounds. Her season high was 11 points against Beachwood earlier in the season. We said earlier, Bishop Brosser won their first six games before falling to their crosstown rival Campbell County their last time out, which was six days ago, last Friday night. There's Wheatley with it now. On the other hand, McNick, with two wins on the year, had a four-game losing streak snapped two games ago. And there it is, Wheatley with the bucket. Wheatley's second bucket here of the third quarter. They win at Seton, then they drop their last game at Kings. And there's a steal, and there goes Strange. And puts it in. And that will cause Steve Brown to call timeout. And he wants one of the full variety. We'll take the break with 3.37 left to go here in the third quarter. McNick jumps out to a six-point lead over Bishop Rossard here on the McNicholas Broadcast Network. Queen City Hoops Fest is proud to partner with Buffalo Wild Wings. Thank you for their sponsorship of the 2023 Hoops Fest and for providing the post-game team meals after Friday's games. If you're hungry for some wings, stop by their Beachmont location and catch all the televised football and basketball games this weekend. Welcome back, fans, to the McNicholas Broadcasting Network. 3.37 left to go. McNick on a 6-0 run here after Bishop Rosser tied it at 29, and that forces Bishop Rosser to call the timeout. But good back-and-forth action between the two teams. Yeah, I think Rosser obviously has a uh, a little bit of an argument there as well with the Rockets. They've been a little loosey-goosey with their uh, pivot foot on the floor, but uh, nothing being called yet so far. Uh, the only real traveling call we've had was against the, the Lady Stang, so I'm sure a little frustration setting in there as well. So Bishop Rosser with it. They'll cross the timeline. This is Zoe Myers picked up there by Ella Zek, who checked in during the timeout, and then a turnover here. And it's a, another turnover back as Meyer gets it. Myers has to wait for some help. Still with it, the high dribble, but kept her hand above the ball. And now out of bounds is Shoemaker. So like she just stepped on the baseline there. Yeah, not great ball handling there by the Lady Stangs. Walking it up his knee neighbor for nice crossover there by the McNick guard. And then she runs right into traffic and is foul called against Bishop Rosser. Oh, that is Kylie Smith. Smith. That's her first foul. Yeah. Wheatley trying to get it in. It's knocked away by Smith, and the Rockets will have to do it again. More closer to the corner, no? Bobby Sager says, no, you stay right where you're at. As Wheatley tries again. She has to lead Knee Neighbor with that pass. And Knee Neighbor will set up the point. Knee neighbor, nice hesitation. Finishes, but traveled on her way there. Well, the Metro stop is, is right outside there, <laughs> Matt Mormon, and I'm sure she'd have been better suited to wait for that one. Boy, there was a not great spacing there by Bishop Rosser. They kick it back out to Myers, who's open, short, and it's rebounded by the Lady Stangs. Here's Smith with it. Now they go right side, which is near side on your camera. Here's Kramer for three, no good. And the long rebound goes to Zek and loses control and somehow Allie Strange comes away with it. Strange gets it to Zek. 
That open, wide open down the middle and draws the foul. Both teams throwing up some pretty good uh, defense here. Making sure that nobody's getting down low without some some sort of contest. It's Eviston who they call the foul on. That's her third, and that'll put Zach to the line. No good by Zach, a 5'8 sophomore guard. This is only the third game that she has played in. But, of course, and she misses that one as well. Of course, without the availability of Ava Strange, it's next person up, and... With Reineke getting the start, Zach comes off the bench to get more playing time as that one rattles in and out for Zoe Myers, and Wheatley gets the rebound. Wheatley goes up the sideline. Now she'll hesitate, still with the bounce. Right down the painted area and in. No one got in her way. And some, Jordan Wheatley made him pay. Some good recognition there by the freshman Molly Dornagan as well, just to get out of the way of Jordan Wheatley and allow her to continue coming down the side. So you're going to see a foul by Ella Zek. So for Zek, that's her first. Should be the team's third as Bishop Brossert makes substitutions. Lucy Gadouli returns, and Ellie Clift also checks back in. Kramer with it. <coughs> Shoemaker, wow, lots of contact, and they call the foul that time on Wheatley. Uh, Wheatley just playing some solid defense down low, just couldn't quite keep herself planning. So that is four fouls in the quarter called on McNick, so it'll force the bonus, the remaining 125 of the third quarter is Shoemaker makes the free throw. And she hits both of them, does Shoemaker. Just a sophomore Shoemaker. Oh, that's a palming the ball. And indeed an unforced error there committed by the freshman Strange. She knew it as soon as, soon as it uh, came up a little too high that she was going to get called for it. She also knows her dad. Oh, I thought dad was going to replace her when she pulled McCafferty back in. Instead, it's Wheatley who gets the rest, probably for the remaining of the third quarter as we approach the one-minute mark. Nice tip good. there by Zach. And now here comes Strange with it. Strange. Oh, nice oh shot. calls her own number. Oh, wow, he's strange. Having a career game here, and there's a steal by Knee Neighbor. It's knocked away. It looked like that was off a of Knee Neighbor again, and it was. So to go to Bishop Rosser with 55.2. Yeah, knee neighbor, knee neighbor just seemed to lose a little bit of possession there, and it kind of landed in the <laughs> lap of the defender and then bounced right back off of her to go out of bounds. So Bishop Rosser crosses the timeline, trailing 39-31. It was a 29-29 game, and since then, McNick has gone on a 10-2 run. Woosley just fires one up there, gets her own rebound. Knee neighbor knocks it away. It's loose. It's still loose. Shoemaker comes away with it and lays it in. There's a little bit of sloppy play there from both teams, but uh, came out smelling like roses for the, for the Brossard Stangs. Here is Knee Neighbor. No one got in front of her, and the rebound on the missed shot is grabbed by Clift. Here's Kramer with it. Gets it to Good Dooley. Almost picked the pocket there by Strange, so they got numbers through the Lady Stangs. The kick out, and they can't get a shot off. They had one pass too many, and the Lady Stangs don't get one off at the end of the quarter. Well, three quarters in the books, the final eight. Coming up next is the Rockets lead the Lady Stangs here on the McNicholas Broadcasting Network. McNicholas Athletics would like to thank Midwestern Plumbing, its proud partner and the presenting sponsor for the 2023 Queen City Hoops Fest Christmas Classic. Midwestern provides quality plumbing services to the Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky area through the use of time-tested and innovative techniques. 
With their years of hands-on expertise and latest technology, Midwestern provides lasting solutions that leave their customers satisfied. Visit Midwestern-Plumbing.com for more information or call Midwestern Plumbing at 513-753-0050. Ready for fourth quarter action here in our first game of five today in the Queen City Hoop Fest Christmas Classic here at McNicholas High School presented by Midwestern Plumbing. And so far the host team, the McNicholas Rockets on the girls side leading at 39 to 33 over the Bishop Rossert Lady Stangs. We'll have one more girls game here today. That'll be coming up next between Ursuline Academy and Notre Dame Academy of Northern Kentucky. That'll be coming up, scheduled at 3.30 p.m. We will try to narrow that down at the end of this one. And that one is dribbled out of bounds by Greeley Kramer and a turnover back to the Rockets. Just another situation where not quite aware where your feet are and stepped on the baseline. On the season, Bishop Rossard, they don't list their turnover stats. In Kentucky, as far as the KHSA, you got to get those individually. A lot of teams don't want to share that because they don't have to. But McNick has forced 10 steals per season, per game this season. Here's Kramer for three. No good. And the over to back call on Dordhagen. And that'll stay down here with Bishop Rosser. So it's actually, that's McC- McCafferty, McCafferty down I'm low. I'm sorry. I think I did that earlier. That's two on McCafferty. She wears 20. Dornhagen is 23. Tipped away by Wheatley and stolen on the inbound pass. Calls her own number. She's and get it. goes around the rim. It flushes through, and she'll go to the line with the and one opportunity. Just great body control by Jordan Wheatley to get down low and able to move her way down court. And you'll see that a lot from Jordan Wheatley throughout the season as she's just going to fight her way from one end of the court to the other. And she cashes in to convert. The largest lead of the day for McNick at nine. Here's Shoemaker with it. Now Myers. As McNick showing zone here. They kick it out to Gadouli. No good. And going after the rebound. Must. And now it's a jump ball. His bodies were all over the place there. And that will go to the Rockets. McCafferty just smart to get down there on the floor with him and grab the ball and wrestle that one out. So Wheatley will bring it across the timeline. Calling the play out from her head coach, R.J. Strange. And she tries to challenge Shoemaker. And Shoemaker walls up and takes it away. Here come, comes Bishop Rosser. They need to get a bucket here in the worst way. Here's Kramer, too strong. And it's rebounded by Must. And right now, Bishop Rosser's one and done. As McNick has been great on the boards. Oh, nice inside pass from knee neighbor to McCafferty. McCafferty, right place, right time, and knee neighbor recognizing that she was basically wide open under the basket. Shoemaker, got it. Nice drive there by Rachel Shoemaker. Shoemaker coming off of a double-double, 22 points and 10 rebounds against Campbell County last Friday night. Ooh. Yeah, that's a play on. That's all right. There's Wheatley backing out Kramer. Now she drives by, challenging Schaefer, or make that Shoemaker, and then a foul on the second opportunity there. And it's indeed Rachel Shoemaker committing her second foul of the game. Hadley Eviston will return for Bishop Rossard, and Lucy Gadouli will go out. Oh, nice move by knee neighbor. Can't finish. A lot of nice moves here by the Rockets, but having a hard time finishing at the rim. And Eviston is fouled on the way up. So they call it against Addison Ranicky. That's her second. 
And that will send Hadley Eviston to the line, who's shooting below 40% on the season from the free throw line. Five feet 11, a forward, just a freshman. And the crowd goes silent for her, and it doesn't <laughs> matter anyway. As she short arms that one. Allie Strange returns for McNick, and Addison Reineke goes out. So Allie Strange has really done a good job pretty much taking up the minutes that were vacated by her older sister, Ava, who's out with a concussion. And missing both of them is Eviston. That is no way to make a comeback, is missing opportunities at the free throw line. A knee neighbor. Got lucky, didn't get called on the travel there. Slipped as she came down the court, but able to get Jordan Wheatley to pick up that's the a ball. Five second violation. They said that it was Wheatley who didn't make an effort to go forward, so that's a turnover. Good defense there by Bishop Rosser. It's either that or a lack of awareness there that the, she had the five count on. Down low to Eviston. No good, and it's rebounded by Strange. The Rockets just doing a good job continuing to contest shots. Here's Knee Neighbor off the bounce, kicks it back out to Wheatley. Good job of cutting her off by Woosley. Now it's Meyer guarding Knee Neighbor, knocks it away, and it's off of Knee Neighbor, and it will go to Bishop Rosser. You can see Knee Neighbor getting a little flustered with the uh, pressure that's coming up against her. And Steve Brown will call timeout with 4.47 left to go in this one. His team is going to have to make a run. We'll see if he can on the other side of the break here on the McNicholas Broadcasting Network. McNicholas Athletics would like to thank its proud partner, BSN Sports, and our McNicholas team rep, Kevin Snyder, for their continued support of the Queen City Hoops Fest and McNicholas Athletics. BSN Sports provides over 450 McNicholas athletes with top-of-the-line gear and service to outfit our 26 sports programs. If you're in the business for outfitting any youth organizations or amateur athletic teams, give BSN Sports a call or visit bsnsports.com. Welcome back, fans. 4.47 left to go. McNicholas hanging on to a 44-35 lead here against the Bishop Rossert Lady Stangs out of Alexandria, Kentucky. And the Stangs have got to figure out a way to piece together some offense. They played well defensively, but offensively is where they've had some struggles. In the corner for Kramer, and it's thrown away. Nice job there by Ella Zek getting in the passing lane, and that's going to be out on the floor, a reach in, and it's going to be the eighth grader, Kylie Smith, with her second foul called. Third foul of the quarter. Once you get to five now is when you shoot the bonus in high school basketball nationwide, and Zek misses. And somehow it goes into the hands of Dornhagen. No good on her attempt. And it's Shoemaker who grabs a rebound and brings it up. Dornhagen was in the right place, just not able to get a good shot off. Zoe Meyer with it now as McNick continues with this zone. Here's Kramer for three. Got it. Greeley Kramer with her fourth three pointer made of the game. She now has 14 points, and here comes the Bishop Rosser press. And it's deflected by Kramer, and it's into the hands of Shoemaker. Here comes Bishop Rosser with it now. Shoemaker into a double team. No good. Probably should have kicked that one out. And here comes the Rockets. Wheatley, the kick out. Wide open is Must. Too strong. And that's going to be an over-the-back call against Bishop Rossard. And it looks like the guilty party is once again going to be Kylie Smith. And that's her third. We're going to see knee neighbor check back in for the Rockets. Must coming off the court. So that was four team fouls against Bishop Rossard. The next one they commit will put the Rockets at the free throw line 
for the bonus. No more one and one bonus. They're two shot penalties. Unless, of course, it's an and one. You only get one. You still get three on a foul on, a, on an attempted three pointer. Oh, nice move there. The floater way too strong, and it's rebounded by Woosley for Bishop Rosser. There's deflected, and that's a steal for the Rockets. On the other end, it's Zach. Lays it up and in. So Ella Zach with her second basket. Finally able to get one to fall. She's had a few shots in the last few drives, but uh, nothing doing for her. Zach with four points, matches a season high she had in the first game of the year against Roger Bacon, and there's a block shot, and here come the Rockets on the other end. And a tip by Dornhagen, just able to get her hand in the face. Wheatley, little out of control, still gets it up, no good. And here comes Bishop Brossard. They need to have a sense of urgency, they do, and they throw it away as a result. Dornhagen once again able to get her hands out of the way and just make sure that that ball wasn't out on her. Ellie Clift along with Lucy Gadouli return for Bishop Rossert. Also McCafferty, I believe, was the one who came in for McNicholas. As we approach the two-minute mark here, it's an eight-point advantage. Can the Rockets add to it? They're not in a big hurry right now. Knee neighbor fires one up short, and the rebound ends up with Shoemaker. Knee neighbor shot that one from UDF. Well, and that's that's available throughout, and then the answer by Zoe Myers, who went a long time without drinks of water. That shot was pretty ill-advised by Knee neighbor on the other end. And how about that? The answer goes down for Dornhagen. Yeah, Dornhagen struggled from getting shots in, but Nice job there. An offensive rebound for Bishop Rossert. Here's Clift. And a top of the key three-pointer is short. And it's Clift again, straight up off the banking board. And how about that? That'll force Steve Meyer to call a timeout right here. He'll have two remaining. And he'll sit him down. It'll be a full timeout. We'll take the break here. The official insurance partner of the Queen City Hoops Fest is the Seamers Insurance Agency. Located on the east side of Cincinnati, Seamers has been family owned and operated since 1954 and now run by 1974 and 1999 McNick graduates Barry and Zach Schmidt. If you're in the need for new insurance quotes, competitive pricing, and a business that provides caring personal service, call Seamers Insurance, a certified independent insurance agency at 513-469-8877 or visit SeamersInsurance.com. One twenty-four left to go in this one. McNick leads it 48 to 43. Make sure to stick around for our most valuable player announcement of this game presented by Midwestern Plumbing. We'll do that for all five games and then we'll take a break and we'll restart a new game right on the YouTube channel so each game's independent, right Matt Warman? Absolutely, that way you can come back and watch every single one of them on demand. Well, McNick beats the press pretty easily there. Here's Knee Neighbor. No need to be in a hurry now that you've crossed the timeline, and Bishop Rosser's got to think about fouling now. They don't have any more to give, so they could foul right away. But McNick is just playing keep away. I'm wondering what they're waiting for. Here's Knee Neighbor. Down by five, and we're under a minute to go now. Here's Wheatley. And again, I'm not sure why Bishop Rosser's not fouling yet. And now it looked like Meyer tried to, and Gadouli finally reaches in with 41.3 left to go to stop the clock, and that will send McNick to the line to shoot two, and it'll be the freshman, Ali Strange, who's just one for six from the free throw line coming into this one. Yeah, I think, you know, you're trying to make a foul, you're trying to make a foul on somebody that you know isn't solid from the line, but she hits the first. 
And they, the, unfortunately, Brosser just wasted, you know, 15, 20 seconds on that. 11 points now for Allie Strange. Make it 12. Obviously, a new career high. The previous high was four at Alter. But getting the most playing time of any game this season. And that one will count for three as Ellie Cliff knocks it down. And then with 31.9, Bishop Rosser trails by four and will call the timeout. And they'll have to use the 30-second timeout now. So we'll keep it right here. But again, the last time out of a timeout, R.J. Strange, head coach of the Rockets, did a really good job drawing up a play to easily beat this full court press. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the, the Rockets are doing exactly what they need to do and just get the ball across the timeline and then waste as much time as possible. Kind of shocked there that the, that the Lady Stangs didn't make a foul earlier. You know, yeah. obviously, they, they like I said, they yeah. wasted a good 15, 20 seconds when they should have been, you know, putting themselves at least in a better position, and now they're, they're up against the clock. Right. 50 to 46. Well, Coach Brown, Steve Brown probably wasn't ready to extend the game, but now he has to. And, of course, you're going to go for the steal here in the backcourt, but for sure once you cross the timeline, you will be able to get across and have to commit the foul there. No, they're going to go for the steal right now, and it's a jump ball. It's a jump ball, and it will go to Bishop Rosser. That's just as good as a turnover. Just a fantastic job to be heads up and aware for the Brossard Lady Stangs as they're going to get the ball back, and this is going to put them in a much better position. They can make this a one-possession game here. Gadouli to Meyer. Meyer drives. She kicks it out, and, oh, that almost went out of bounds. And it's stolen away by McNick. Here's Knee Neighbor with it. Knee Neighbor escapes. Now it's Wheatley, and Gadouli will have to foul with her third foul with 13.9 to go, and that will send the Rockets to the line. Even if you make both of them, it's still just a two-possession game, but 13.9 seconds left to go. Could still be a tall task. And Wheatley extends it to 51-46. Wheatley, a 5'9 junior, averaging nearly 13 points a game, only shooting 46.5% makes both of them her third make of the quarter. And a timeout called here by the Rockets. It will be a full timeout. Let's go ahead and take the break, and we'll be back on the McNicholas Broadcasting Network. McNicholas Athletics has been a proud partner with La Rosa's Pizzeria for many years. McNick and the Hoops Fest would like to thank La Rosa's for Thursday's post-game team meals and their continual generous support of our student athletes and teams. If you're hungry and looking for somewhere to eat after the game, visit the Anderson, Amelia, Mount Washington, Marymount, or Eastgate locations and help those who support us. Welcome back, fans, to McNicholas Broadcasting Network. The Rockets lead at 52-46 in our first game of the Queen City Hoop Fest Christmas Classic presented by Midwestern Plumbing. Bishop Brossard has to score and do it quickly. And Knee Neighbor was trying to foul her there because McNick has fouls to give. So that's her third. And honestly, McNick still has one more to give, so they'll probably try to foul at least one more time. The one thing they don't want to do is give up a basket. Here's a long three, no good, and it's rebounded by Knee Neighbor, and this will pretty much do it. And Steve Brown calls off the dogs, and McNick ends up winning the first one here today by a score of 52 to 46. And how about that, the Rockets hold their home court in their own holiday classic. <laughs> Just a you know fantastic job, obviously. Came out a little slow, a little sluggish to start things off. Uh, struggled on offense, especially to, to start the game, but the, the defense really kind of helped put them back into a good position to uh, take the lead, and then they were able to hold off 
the uh, uh, surging Brosser team here in the second half. McNick improves to three and five on the season. Bishop Brosser losing their second straight as they fall to six and two. And now the Midwest Plumbing Player of the game is being announced. There'll be one for each game, and it's McNick's Jordan Wheatley ties a, a career high 18 points and three key free throws made in that fourth quarter. Yeah, Wheatley has always been the, the the player on this Rockets team that has kind of put the team on her back. Uh, you know, physical player does a lot on both sides of the court, and she was just a, a key part of this win for the Rockets tonight. Rachel Shoemaker in a losing effort leads Bishop Rosser with 14 points. They put 15 minutes on the clock, my friend. That'll get us back on schedule, so 3.30 will be the tip time for our next game. It's another girls game between Ursuline Academy and the Notre Dame Academy Pandas. It's a battle between Lions and Pandas coming up next, and we'll have it all here on the McNicholas Broadcast Network is game number two of the third annual Queen City Hoops Fest. Chris